Hello everyone and welcome back to One Soccer. I am your host for today, Josh Deming, and we are back with another episode of Canadians Abroad. This week we are focusing in on five major storylines surrounding Canadian football, so hopefully you guys are excited, and if you are, let's get into the episode now. All right, everyone, so to kick off this week's episode, we are focusing in on FC Hollywood. That is right, FC Hollywood is back. Bayern have made a statement by sacking Julian Nagelsmann while he was away skiing and have appointed Thomas Tuchel. This is massive news because Nagelsmann was on the way to lead Bayern to a potential treble. They are competing in the DFB Pokal, they are competing in the Bundesliga, and they are competing for the Champions League. But they wanted Tuchel, they didn't want to miss it on that opportunity, so they sack Nagelsmann and in comes Thomas Tuchel. But us Canadians are wondering, what does that mean for Alfonso Davies? Well, under Nagelsmann, Davies has been currently playing some fantastic football, some of the best form I've ever seen him. He's playing in a back three, which allows him to play as a wing back, which in my opinion is where he's best suited. He bombs up and down the pitch. He's got great defensive attributes. He's contributing with goals and assists, and he's just in perfect form. So seeing Nagelsmann go right now isn't ideal mid-season going into a Champions League quarterfinal, and when our Canadian starlet is shining the way he is, it's not ideal. Now, Davies did play in his first match under Thomas Tuchel over the weekend, and of course, it was an FC Hollywood. I know I'm using that quite a bit, but it was an FC Hollywood move because they sacked their manager right before a top-of-the-table tilt with BBB, and guess who they brought in? BBB's ex-manager, Thomas Tuchel. So bringing in a manager like that got a reaction, but he did change up the system. He went from that back three into a 4-2-3-1, a system that Thomas Tuchel and the players are very familiar with. And because of that system, we saw Davies have to drop back a little bit more into that left back position. He was still able to start, which was fantastic, but he didn't have the best of games, but in all honesty, he was wrapped up before halftime. Bayern were up 4-0. Dortmund did get a couple back and it ended 4-2. And with that win, Bayern are now top of the table, but Shortly after midweek, their DFB Pokal run came to an end. Cancelo got to start over Davies for Tuchel, and unfortunately, they lost 2-1 to Freiburg, which sees them get eliminated, and not really the best start for Thomas Tuchel, so very weird circumstances going on right now at Bayern. I'm curious to see how Davies will do. He's always thrived under different managers at Bayern, so I'm not overly nervous for him, but it just was a bit of a shame because he was in such incredible form with Nagelsmann, and he was playing in a system that truly suited Davies' strengths. Staying on the topic of manager sackings, there was another one as Pacheta was sacked from Valladolid, and this will impact Kyle Lahren. Kyle Lahren is really enjoying his football right now in the Liga. He is scoring goals for fun, and he has the trust of his manager. And unfortunately, though, for Valladolid, they haven't been getting the results lately, which kind of led them into a relegation scrap. And now a new manager is going to come in, and we are going to have to see what's going to happen with Kyle Lahren because he unfortunately wasn't able to feature for the match against Real Madrid, and they lost 6 0, which ultimately cost Pacheta his job. But now this incredible form that Lahren has will have to be replicated under a new manager. When a new manager comes in in a dogfight trying to basically avoid relegation, tactics can change, decisions can be made, and right now Kyle Aaron was probably hoping Pachetta would stay because he's got the trust under him, but we'll have to wait to see what happened. And it's very difficult for players who are thriving to have new managers, and it's going to be a little different for Davies. He's not overly used to it, but he's shown that he can play under certain managers, and so is Tejan Buchanan. And Buchanan has been at Club Bruges for a little over a year and a half, and he has had four different managers and it's very difficult for new systems to keep coming in and if you haven't noticed with Tejan Buchanan right now we've seen him play as a winger we've seen him play as a left wing back right wing back right back left back a lot of managers have different ideas and it's really hard for a player just to settle into their environment when they constantly have new managers that's Tejan's case that won't necessarily be Lawrence this is a new manager but it could affect the way that his season ends and remember, we don't know exactly what's going to happen because if Vida Lead end up getting relegated, then that opens the door for Kyle Aaron to potentially go to another club. His future is wide open, but one thing is for sure is he's producing at the club level and international level. He was doing it under Pachetta to see him go is probably going to not be great for Kyle Aaron. This past weekend, we saw a couple Canadians go head to head as Kyle Hebert and St. Louis City took on Dane St. Clair and Minnesota United. And Kyle Hebert recently told us it was his dream to play for Canada, and he just lived that dream, making his debut for the Canadian men's national team. It was incredible to see. He's playing for a historic expansion club right now in St. Louis City, scoring goals and really enjoying his football. But unfortunately for him over the weekend, he conceded a penalty which led to a goal and it was a 1-0 win for Minnesota United over St. Louis City, ending their undefeated streak. 
Wasn't the best game for Hebert, unfortunately, even though he did look pretty well besides giving up the penalty, but it was an excellent match for Dane St. Clair as Minnesota United are sneakily having a very successful season so far, five matches in, and St. Clair looks like the real deal. A lot of Canadians expect him to push on and become the number one keeper after Milan Borian, and I think there's a very good shot that he could do it. Yeah, it's been a good start to the year for, for Dane St. Clair and Minnesota United. I mean, they've just quietly, uh, you know, picked up a couple wins they're at the, you know, near the top of the Western Conference. And I think their defensive play is a big reason why. The fact that they've only conceded three goals in five games. Of course, Dane Sinclair played for them. He, he did miss one while he was with, you know, over with the Canadian men's national team on international break. But in every other game he's played, he has kept two clean sheets. He's otherwise only allowed, you know, one goal each in the other games. And that, that bodes well. I mean, Minnesota did shore up their back line last year. They were very leaky. So what happened is that Dane Sinclair was relied upon a lot. And this year, he doesn't have such a big load on his shoulders, but he's doing very well. He's commanding their back line, keeping it organized. And when he's called upon, which is, you know, a lot less than last year, it's still been very good. And he made some key saves against this in St. Louis team that's been scoring a lot of goals. And the fact that, you know, Minnesota were the first team to go there, keep a clean sheet in St. Louis too, not, you know, at home get that first win over St. Louis with St. Clair keeping a clean sheet, playing a big role in that. It's a good sign for him. And I think it's something where he's pushing Milan Boran and then pushing Max Kruppel when he'll be back. So if he can keep getting those, those reps, he's, you know, still super young, uh, just 25 about to turn 26. If he can keep getting those reps, maybe a European move will beckon, but certainly more minutes for Canada, potentially starting at a gold cup, for example. And then, uh, We'll see where he takes it from there, but very encouraged by uh, what he's shown so far this year. A few other Canadians went toe-to-toe -to -toe as in the Women's Champions League semifinals, we saw Chelsea take on Lyon. You had Fleming Buchanan against Gilles, and it was an incredible match. Lyon went on to win 2-1, which sent the match to extra time, 2-2 on aggregate. It went to a penalty shootout. Buchanan played incredible all match long. Gilles scored a goal, and of course, Jesse Fleming came on to take a penalty, which she converted. Chelsea won 4-3 on penalties, and they are going to the Champions League final. And on the other side of that semifinal, we saw Ashley Lawrence and PSG taking on Wolfsburg. Unfortunately for them, they slipped though as Wolfsburg move on to go and join Chelsea in the Champions League finals. So we have two Canadians there, Fleming and Buchanan, and they are looking to make history. Yeah, Kadisha Buchanan is just rounding very nicely into form uh, for Chelsea. The you know it's, just, it's still a new signing. It's important to remember, and I think it's it's come at the perfect time for Chelsea as she's really stepped up in some big games. And I think the Champions League was a great example of that. They got drawn with Lyon, who you know they they'd won six of the last seven Champions Leagues. Of course, Buchanan a part of five of those teams, so she was very familiar with what they're they're able to do. But it was a tough draw as Lyon finished second in their group pretty much a worst case scenario but Chelsea took it on the chin they went out to Lyon they got a key one they'll win Buchanan played you know very good in that game and then Lyon came to you know to Stamford Bridge gave them a bit of trouble but Buchanan held her nerve did what she needed to do they got through on penalties and I think the best growing sign of her confidence is that she went 90 on the weekend against Aston Villa a few days later and looked even better she looked great made some huge interventions Chelsea won comfortably 3-0 and I think that's key because earlier in the season you could tell that you know Chelsea really wanted Buchanan for a Champions League she was playing in those Champions League games sometimes in the league it was a bit of a fight Chelsea do have a deep squad so she wasn't always playing but now it feels like she's playing week in week out getting these 90 minutes look better and better and I think this is exactly what Chelsea wanted when they signed her they got a Champions League winner someone who would played in these big games played in these finals had done well and and now the fact that she's helped Chelsea get to the semifinals, they have a very good shout of going out and winning it all. I think, you know, it's showing why they, Chelsea made this move to bring her in. And I think it's perfect timing for them. And for Canada, you can't help but be excited because with the World Cup just around the corner, informed Buchanan is, is going to go a long way because when she's at her best, she's one of the best center backs in the world for a reason. There's a bit of a trend going on in this week's episode as another pair of Canadians faced off over the weekend. It was Alistair Johnson and Celtic taking on Victor Latoury in Ross County. It was an entertaining match, but in the end, Celtic took it 2 nothing, and Alistair Johnson once again looked incredible. A performance was so good, it earned himself a spot in the Scottish Premier League Team of the Week. He just loves this league, he loves this club, and he's continuing to show why he's one of the best defenders in this league already. But on the flip side of that result, Victor Latoury also had himself a pretty impressive performance. It is never easy taking on a club like Celtic, but he held his own, he looked good, and he got one over not only once, but twice on Alistair Johnson. I had to show it, I'm sorry Alistair, but 
Latoury got you there with some incredible footwork, and it just shows that he's continuing to grow in this league. His confidence is getting better, and he could be a very important player for the Canadian national team in the future. Sticking with the Scottish Premier League, there is some transfer news as Harry Payton has signed a contract with Motherwell until the end of the season. I recently sat down with Harry and talked about the move. And now you've just recently signed for Motherwell. How excited were you when you found out the club was interested in you and, and kind of what were the details that got you to sign for the club? Um, yeah, um, I left Ross County um, at the end of last season. Uh, they were looking to sign me, uh, but I just wanted to, to get home back to Canada for a while um, and then my ex-manager who actually signed me to Ross County, um, who just got appointed at Motherwell, um, gave me a call um, and he was really uh, keen on bringing me in. Um, and I got over there straight away, he was really um, wanted to get me involved straight away. Um, and I flew over, uh, got everything signed and actually played into the, the first game and got some good minutes. Yeah, that was uh, that's what I was going to say too. Not only you were wasting you wasted no time. You you signed for the club and you debuted for them that day. What was it like after that this time off to come back to the club and and join join this club and then come back on the pitch like that? What were the emotions going through your mind and uh, and how do you feel on your first uh, game back? Yeah, definitely it was really rushed, um, but football can be like that sometimes. Um, but yeah, I was just really happy to to get it sorted. Um, and yeah, when the when he did call me, I was just excited to get back in playing in the in the league uh and yeah just I, I was expecting to get some minutes um but i wasn't expecting to get that many um but i came on in and played well and hopefully shown the fans you know what i can bring to the team and um as well the players i didn't really know most of the players names at the time so uh but i think my football uh, was able to speak for itself and uh yeah just looking to help the team out for the rest of the season and now that you're at Motherwell, what would you say your, your biggest goal would be potentially on or off the pitch for the rest of this season and potentially even the rest of the year? Yeah, for sure. Uh, for the for on the pitch, I'd say my biggest goal is um, just to keep learning. Um, still got uh, room to grow. Um, definitely want to improve in um, kind of my final third uh, stats as in assists and goals. Um, definitely feel like I can do it. Um, I worked a lot on it. Um, over the past few years and I think that's something I can bring and that's that's where my goal is going to be is getting those goals and, and those assists for sure. That was just a little sneak peek so if you want to watch the entire Harry Payton interview be sure to keep an eye on the One Soccer YouTube channel. Moving on now to our next storyline. It is a very intriguing one, although it probably won't happen for a few years if it happens at all and that is the prospect of Ryan Gold representing the Canadian men's national team. Now, Ryan Gold is the type of player that us Canadians are dreaming of. He's that creative number 10 that would give Herdman a lot of flexibility with his tactics, especially if he tried to implement a 4-2-3-1 and having Gold play as that center attacking mid. I love what he's done in his time in Vancouver he's coming over in 2021, and I have no idea how Scotland has never given this man an opportunity, but it opens the door for Canada. And Alex and I recently sat down and did an interview with Ryan Gold where we asked him if the opportunity one day presented itself, would he represent the Maple Leaf? And this is what he had to say. Uh, I think that's a conversation to be had, you know, when the time comes, but, um, you know, I don't see why not if the, if the opportunity did arise. Um, you know, like you said, guys like Witherspoon and um, Scott Arfield uh, grasped the chance and I'm sure they're delighted with the decision they made. So uh, I think that's still a couple of years away, though. So I don't think there's too much point in, in looking far into it. It is worth noting that if Ryan Gold does become eligible for Canada, he will do so just in time for the 2026 World Cup. And what an opportunity that would be to be able to represent Canada like that on home soil. That is all the time we have for in this week's edition of Canadians Abroad. I really hope you all enjoyed it, but I need you all to stay tuned to One Soccer for the month of April. It will be absolutely crazy. 
The Canadian Premier League is kicking off, and I will be doing a match vlog for that. I'm going to Hamilton to cover the season opener for Forge FC. It will be a lot of fun. I got a lot of help going on with that video as well, so definitely stay tuned and watch out for that. We have the Canadian Championship as well, CONCACAF Champions League. Alfonso Davies and Bayern are taking on Manchester City in the Champions League. That will be an insane two-leg affair to see who moves on to the semifinals. And of course, our Canadian women are in action as they take on France in a friendly. So much action. If you want to catch all of that, we'll be covering it here at One Soccer, so definitely stay tuned. And if you enjoyed this episode, we will see you guys next week.